Welcome, everybody. My name is Pascal. I'm the CTO here at uh, Zama. Uh, so we're, we're having these FHG.org meetups uh, every month. And we're trying to cover like every aspect of FHG, not only the scientific aspects, but also like instrumentation aspects and user experiences around building amorphic applications and crypto libraries and hardware and attacks and, uh, and uh, you name it. So we're trying really to have like a, a very broad scope in terms of, in terms of presentations. Uh, the first thing is that if you're new, if you're a newcomer, uh, you can check out the fhe.org website. You'll find plenty of content. And also we have a, a, a conference, a first workshop coming up of fhe.org. It's gonna be in Trondheim <clears throat> in Norway in about a month. And uh, you're very welcome to register to, uh, to the conference. Um, I think if you, it's collocated with Eurocrypt. So if you wait too much before registering to the event, I think it's next Friday that you have to pay like 100 uh, euros more or dollars more to attend Eurocrypt. Um, and so if you can like register as soon as possible, that would be, that would be nice. Um, so we received a lot of submissions for FHG.org. We're very happy that we've put together a very, very nice program. You can, uh, you can check the program out on the FHG.org uh, website. It will not be a hybrid event, uh, meaning that you have to attend physically. Um, there will be no live stream uh, going on for this, for this event. And the nice thing is if you show up at the event, there will be a cool uh, after party uh, locally so that people can uh, you know, socialize and meet each other and, uh, and uh, hopefully collaborate and, and talk and, and so on. Uh, right, so I think we're ready now to, um, <clears throat> to have this, uh, this presentation. So uh, Furkan is going to uh, talk about attack, such an attacks um, on FHG applications. Um, and uh, Furkan, yeah. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Pascal. Uh, thank you for uh, kind invitation. And uh, my name is Furkan. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a PhD student at North Carolina State University. Uh, I'm doing PhD under the guidance of uh, uh, Dr. Aisu. And uh, in this uh, work, uh, I will present the uh, our uh, date paper uh, and uh, in this work uh, we collaborated also uh, Dr. Alcom from uh, Dokuzeylil University. Uh, let's start uh, talk about uh, our presentation. Uh, I know uh, everyone knows what is homework encryption and uh, but I, I would like to uh, shortly mention about maybe uh, some of you uh, not familiar about it. Uh, homework encryption is a new technology uh, that enables any kind of computing on encrypted data without knowing the secret key. Uh, you can see from the figure uh, a basic example of homework encryption operation. Uh, one client uh, encrypts their uh, secret message uh, locally and uh, sends to the uh, cloud. Cloud only uh, ever sees encrypted data in this stage uh, and uh, other users can perform operations on this encrypted data without knowing the secret key. Uh, only uh, the client can uh, decrypt it with uh, the secret key and uh, reveal the result of the computation. Uh, there are uh, many applications uh, uh, about homework encryption, for example, uh, databases, banking, electronic voting. And I think in the future, uh, there will be many, uh, much more uh, applications. Uh, in this work, uh, we implemented the, uh, we implemented a hardware of, uh, uh, seal homework encryption library. Uh, seal uh, is a uh, open source homework 
homomorphic encryption library. It's, uh, it's written by uh, uh, cryptography and privacy research group at uh, Microsoft. And uh, it is written in C++ uh, language. It supports uh, CKKS scheme and uh, BFB uh, scheme. Uh, in our work, uh, we focus on uh, BFB scheme, uh, which allows operation on uh, encrypted integers. Uh, the other scheme is uh, performing operation on uh, real complex numbers. Uh, also, uh, still has been paged uh, many times. Uh, since uh, we started the project, uh, the seal, there was a sealed version uh, 3.2. And uh, our attack uh, is a, a applicable uh, pr previous version of three, uh, version 3.6. Uh, OK. Uh, I will mention about a little bit uh, side channel attacks. Uh, uh, side channel attacks, uh, side channel attack aims at extracting secret keys from physical behavior of uh, device. Uh, These physical behaviors can be uh, power consumption, uh, timing information, electromagnetic leaks, or even sound. Uh, in a digital uh, CMOS circuit, the dynamic power consumption is uh, caused by transition of logic signals. Uh, these transitions depend on the logical function of a circuit and processed data. So the power consumption of an integrated uh, circuit depends on the data that's being processed. And uh, power-based side-channel attacks uh, extract the uh, secret keys uh, from cryptographic systems using uh, correlation between uh, power consumption and uh, data. Uh, one of the most studied uh, side channel attack is uh, differential power analysis. Differential power analysis requires uh, multiple power measurements uh, to extract uh, secret information. But uh, some crypto systems uh, generate, uh, generate a uh, key for each new uh, uh, session. So attacker has to perform uh, attack uh, using only a single power trace. Uh, this kind of attack is called a single trace side channel attack. Uh, our attack uh, will also be uh, our attack is also a single trace attack because uh, seal uh, generates new secrets for uh, each uh, new session. Uh, in our threat model, attacker uh, knows seal software and uh, its encryption parameters uh, and, uh, and uh, has physical access to the target device uh, and tries to learn the uh, plain text message. And uh, also, as I mentioned, the attacker has to perform the attack with a, a single power trace. Yeah, you can, uh, I wrote attacker, but you can think that. Uh, uh, at, we are in the uh, during the uh, in this work. Uh, we are in the position of the attacker. We try to break the uh, system. Uh, let's go to uh, the details of the uh, our attack. Uh, we analyze the seal uh, en encryption uh, seals encryption uh, part. And uh, you can see some uh, green uh, colors. Uh, they are uh, publicly known variables, but uh, red colors are uh, unknown variables. Uh, this formulation is uh, for uh, ciphertext. Uh, C0 and uh, C1 are the uh, ciphertext. And, uh, M is a uh, message value, and uh, P0, P1 are uh, public key values, and uh, U is uh, sampled values. U is not known, M is not known, and uh, also uh, error values. Uh, these are the error polynomials uh, are not known in this equation. Uh, we derive this equation. Uh, 
uh, to find uh, u values for example in this in the first part uh, if we uh, drive the u values uh, sorry in the second part if we drive the u values uh, u is uh, depends on uh, on just only unknown uh, error, uh, error polynomials to uh, two values and uh, also if we uh, derive the uh, message values. Uh, you can see that the message value is uh, only uh, in this equation the only unknown variables are uh, error polynomials. If you find the error polynomials, uh, you can find the uh, message values. You can extract the uh, message values. Uh, we analyzed the seals encryption codes and uh, we found some uh, vulnerabilities, uh, actually uh, three vulnerabilities. Uh, uh, our attack uh, targets uh, seals Gaussian sampling operation. And the first vulnerability is uh, branch operation. You can see from uh, line 13, line 18, and uh, line 25. Uh, in the hardware implementations, uh, each branch in the hardware in each branch uh, takes a different amount of time. So uh, in, in our attack, we will uh, look at the uh, shape of the uh, power measurements uh, that will uh, that are uh, captured from device uh, and we will identify the uh, branch uh, which branch is taken and which branch is not taken and uh, another uh, vulnerability is uh, non-uniform value assignment uh, this is in uh, line 12 uh, if we uh, attack on this uh, assignment. Uh, our uh, goal uh, is to find uh, the noise values. Uh, but the problem is uh, uh, Hemming weight representations, uh, different noise values can be, can have the uh, same Hemming weight uh, representations. And uh, so, it creates some false positives. So we couldn't find exactly all the noise values by attacking to this line. And uh, so we are uh, looking uh, for uh, line uh, 20 for the uh, third vulnerability. Uh, this eliminates some of the uh, false positives. Uh, I will mention about them later. And uh, you can see from these slides, it's a, a one example of uh, captured power trace. Seal uh, uh, library is uh, running on the one FPGA, and we are capturing power trace uh, from oscill uh, using oscilloscope. And uh, you can see three iteration of the uh, Gaussian sampling operation. Uh, in 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 the real power measurements, uh, there are many uh, uh, iterations. Uh, but uh, in order to see uh, easily in, uh, in figure, uh, I cut off them. Uh, to, I uh, cut three of them, and uh, you can see that uh, if the noise is uh, equal to zero. The power uh, trace is uh, look like uh, in, in this figure, and if the uh, noise is greater than its shape is uh, different, and if noise is uh, less than zero, its shape is different. By uh, analyzing uh, this uh, data, we can uh, we uh, identify the uh, noise values. It uh, 100 uh, success rate because uh, every time its shapes are uh, different. 
uh, also uh, by the way uh, our uh, we implemented the uh, seal uh, library on uh, sakura g uh, fpga bot uh, which is xilinx spartan 6 fpga uh, our design is uh, based on risc 5 based architecture uh, and uh, we used uh, pico rv32 core uh, it's an uh, open core uh, open source core and uh, we captured a uh, power trace uh, using pico uh, scope 6424 oscilloscope uh, for the uh, attack part we uh, we need to perform a single trace attack uh, because each session the uh, keys are updated uh, there are different kinds of uh, single trace attacks, uh, for example, uh, horizontal differential power attacks, also some profiling based attacks, uh, for example, deep learning based attacks and uh, template attacks. Uh, in this work, we uh, perform template attack. Uh, first, uh, we uh, profile the device with uh, we create a uh, profiling of the device with uh, different uh, uh, executions. Uh, for profiling, we uh, use 220,000 profiling execution. And uh, after performing profiling, uh, we perform the uh, attack on uh, test traces. Uh, and uh, our attack results in uh, you can see from this table uh, this is a combination of the uh, uh, attack of the uh, this branch operations attacks and uh, the uh, other uh, assignment was attacks results and uh, you can see the uh, uh, Positive for the positive numbers, we couldn't find the uh, uh, exact coefficients with uh, high pers uh, high success rates uh, due to the uh, false positives. But uh, since uh, in the uh, since uh, in the uh, due to the negation operation, it, uh, thanks to the negation operation. Uh, our success results for the uh, negative values are uh, higher. And uh, for uh, zero, uh, to get in for zero values is 100% uh, due to the uh, branch operation. After finding uh, this uh, ratio, uh, we use uh, this uh, ratio as a uh, hint to. Uh, to send a uh, framework. Uh, this framework uh, estimates the remaining uh, space uh, based on our attack results. And uh, this uh, uh, open source framework uh, use a recent uh, method. And uh, it generates, uh, uh, it gives us the uh, security level of the system. When we use the first vulnerability, uh, just branch, uh, when we focus on just branch operations, the security level uh, is uh, decreased to, uh, from two to the power of 128 to two to the power of 84.34. Uh, 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 so this is a very uh, large number. Uh, it's uh, very difficult to find. Uh, the secret key uh, values uh, using classical uh, computers. Uh, so uh, science alone cannot recover the plain text message uh, when we're using only first vulnerability. But when we use the uh, uh, data results that uh, come from the old third vulnerability, uh, we reduce the security uh, to two to the power of uh, 4.4. So after, uh, it means that if we uh, 
uh, after performing the attack, uh, this attack, if we perform a brute force attack, uh, the system is uh, will be broken uh, because uh, very very low uh, possibility. Uh, in the conclusion, uh, we uh, performed the first such an attack on the uh, hardware implementation of a homework encryption library. And uh, we identified the unique vulnerabilities of uh, Gaussian sampling uh, subroutine. And uh, uh, we uh, showed that uh, homework encryption, uh, there will be more focus is needed uh, on homework encryption implementation security. Uh, by the way, we are not claiming that uh, this uh, kind of uh, software-based attack. This uh, hardware implementation is uh, uh, problematic. So uh, we also uh, talk with uh, Microsoft team and uh, they are not uh, focusing on the uh, hard, uh, hardware, they are not implementing the hardware of the uh, homework encryption. Uh, they just changing the uh, software, their software codes uh, to uh, re reduce, uh, to increase uh, its security. And uh, this research is supported by uh, NSF and Center for Advanced Electronics through uh, machine learning and its uh, industry members. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm happy to take your questions. Great. Thank you very much for Ken. Um, I think I have, yes, we can uh, give me a, Give him a round of applause virtually. Uh, thank you very much. I think there are probably, I mean, I have plenty of questions, but maybe people in the audience also have questions. So in the audience, if um, if you have questions, please unmute yourself. You can also uh, show up, you know, uh, visually. Uh, it's always nicer to the uh, to the presenter and uh, to ask your question to for Ken. Anybody? Okay, so I think in the chat there was there were a couple of questions. There is a, a question by Fafa. Fafa, if you're here, can you unmute yourself and and um, ask your question directly to Furkan? Yes, can you, can you, can you, okay, all right, <clears throat> all right, doesn't seem to be, um, all right, doesn't matter, I can, I can ask the question. Um, so the question is, uh, on what are we going to run the attack on Arduino? So I guess no. Uh, in, in your presentation, you said you, you basically, what you've done is to take SEAL and to compile it to uh, to your uh, FPGA board, right, Xilinx, and then uh, run that directly on the FPGA. Is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, yes, in the FPGA. So you did nothing else than just compiling the library as it is for your board. You didn't change the library in any way. No. Is that uh, correct? Yes, I didn't change the, the library. I just uh, compiled there. Uh, Microsoft C++, uh, C++ code uh, using Chris 5 compiler. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> so maybe to, 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 to clarify uh, things a little bit. So um, you're saying that you're, so basically you, you found three vulnerabilities in the code. Um, and the, the reason why you're having like 100% success rate is I guess, uh, essentially because of the test that the noise is negative, right? So I guess it's very easy to see by just uh, measuring the amount of time that, they, that the code is, is, is taking to run 
that you can infer the, the, the sign of the noise like very easily and it gives you, and after that you have, you have still the, uh, I would say the mathematical part of the attack where you infer the key and then you have to uh, use the, the hints that you got from the from your template attack. Um, what would happen if, if the code was different and instead of explicitly testing if the noise is negative, there would be some kind of a regularized piece of code that doesn't do any ifs, uh, but just behaves differently depending on the, on the size of the, on the, um, uh, sorry, the sign of the noise. Uh, do you think you could still be able to run the attack? Uh, no, uh, actually, yeah. uh, if there is no uh, branch operations, if there, uh, there is also uh, some uh, protections and assignments operations, uh, that the attack will not be uh, successful. So that's the, uh, we are also uh, uh, trying to uh, show that, the, uh, for example, uh, software coders uh, should try to should also think the. Uh, this kind of hardware implementations, this kind of hardware uh, uh, vulnerabilities by writing their codes. Because uh, if they uh, write their codes uh, without considering uh, this kind of vulnerabilities, uh, hardware implementations will be uh, attacked and uh, secret information will be exact. Yeah, great question. Okay, um, so so this would be um, this would be a very effective countermeasure then, I guess to just do this replacement and and kick out this if um, that is problematic in the implementation. W would you have like any other like countermeasures? Uh, because okay, so it doesn't it doesn't work the same way if there is no if, all right, but it doesn't. That doesn't prove that there is not another, like a more advanced attack in the future, even if the if is, is removed. Like, would you have recommendations for developers who would like to um, basically have a such and secure version of Seal? What kind of recommendations would you would you give them um, if they wanted to uh, refactor the code and try to? To remove all these uh, all these potential weaknesses. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, great question. Uh, for example, uh, in seal uh, in our uh, in their parameter settings, there are one thousand twenty four coefficients. This is one thousand twenty four. In each iteration, they are taking one. Uh, they are generating one uh, uh, sampling volume. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, they can be uh, one uh, uh, shuffling mechanism, or uh, for example, randomizing the order of the uh, right. noise. So yeah. this can be a protect the uh, system. Uh, also, so, maybe maybe they mm -hmm. can add some uh, masking countermeasures to uh, right. Uh, yeah. This kind of obfuscation uh, techniques can be used to, to protect the system. So you would say like the classical countermeasures in such an attacks that are being used in other places and for other reasons, uh, but like using shuffling, using masking to protect intermediate variables, these kind of things. Yeah. Okay. Great. I think Sofian has a question. Sofian, can you uh, mute yourself and show yourself if you will? Yeah. Ask your question, uh, do, hello, everyone. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. So my question is: um, Thank you for your talk. If your attack is based on the fact that the only unknown variable is the polynomial error, um, why it is specific to seal? I mean, uh, did you try it with other library like uh, Palisade? Uh, actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, we couldn't uh, try it uh, yet. Uh, it's uh, our uh, f future work. Uh, uh, we will try it. Uh, but for uh, for a basement uh, scenario, we first choose the uh, Microsoft seal, and there are also 
uh, other uh, homework encryption, like you said, one of them is uh, Parasite. And uh, our, uh, in th this year, our plan is to look at the other uh, libraries and uh, analyze uh, their codes if there is a, a, a different kind of vulnerability for uh, to uh, attackable uh, codes or not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Is there any other question in the audience? Please raise your hand if you have if you have a question. Okay. People are, are pretty shy. Uh, maybe I can ask another question, um, which is. Um, so I think it's it's a follow up of, of the last question. Like every so, if you implement homomorphic encryption, you have to use Gaussian noise and you have to generate Gaussian noise at encryption time. Um, <clears throat> so we can assume that with your attack, with your template attack, you you would be able to attack by virtually any implementation of any library that does this, assuming that you can that there is like the same pitfall in the sense that um, there would be an, an if that would do the same thing than here, or that there is another kind of weakness in the in the implementation. So, uh, so I guess, well, my assumption would be like any FHE library or piece of library on the client side that actually does the encryption should fall uh, if not carefully implemented, right? Um, so it's, uh, um, I mean, <clears throat> normally everything that you've done here could be repeated for for other libraries um, unless the libraries are are specifically you know crafted to resist these uh, these attacks. Um, but um, yeah, I don't I don't think there is anybody else raising their hands right now. Oh, Victor has a question. Victor, yeah, yeah, can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, Hi. thanks. For, hi, thanks for the presentation. Um, I have a question about the threat model. Um, if I well understood, the goal is to retrieve the plain text in clear, but um, uh, I'm I'm not sure to see how to apply it in a real world scenario, as we um, the adversary would have to re to record the the power consumption of the of the computation. Uh, of the encryption of the plain text. So it means that uh, for me, the adversary uh, should spy on the device and to be in a, in a close uh, vicinity of the device at the same time then the plain text is encrypted. So probably that the user is not far from his device. Is it clear? Uh, yes, yes, it's clear. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, in uh, our assumption, uh, in our threat model, we uh, think that the uh, attacker has the uh, access to the clone of the device, uh, like every uh, profiling uh, attacks. Uh, it can uh, capture uh, power trace from the uh, device uh, by setting their own uh, uh, secret keys, so they get many power trace. They create a profile of the device. In the, uh, in the attack part, uh, uh, they don't uh, know the uh, secret key. Uh, they just uh, capture the po power trace from the device. Uh, just single power trace. Uh, they try to find the. Uh, they try to find the uh, secret key. Uh, but uh, you are right, in uh, some of the real uh, stations, uh, this ca cannot be happened. For example, if the attacker has not access to the real device, they couldn't uh, perform the attack. Uh, so in this case, it's uh, the uh, physical access uh, is a requirement for uh, perform the attack. Thank you for the question. Is it clear? Okay, thank you.
Great. Any other questions, Adrien? Yes. Salut, do you, go ahead. Do you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to to continue on on Victor Christian. Uh, just to be clear, uh, what are you? Uh, what, what is the attacker targeting? Is it the, the plain text or is it the secret key that is? Uh, uh, okay, actually, the uh, main, uh, the final uh, target is uh, the uh, message, the user's message. But uh, yeah, the f f final target is finding the user message. But uh, to find the message, we are first uh, attacking to find the uh, error values. After finding the error values, uh, we are uh, sending the success rates to a uh, recent framework, uh, LWE uh, estimator. So this one is uh, giving the, uh, fi uh, finding the, uh, what is the uh, security level to find the uh, message. So, uh, this, since this is very low, we are saying that it's uh, easy to find the message because it's uh, less than 32 uh, possibility uh, when performing the whole force attack. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, but but, but so what, what is uh, preventing you from covering the secret key? Um, assuming that you know the message, you will use the BKZ to do the latest the latest reduction, and then you you will still benefit from the uh, from the reduction of the number of decks, right? So you should be able to recover the secret key. That's... Uh, for this uh, for our attack, uh, we are not uh, focusing on secret key. Actually, actually, <laughs> secret key is on the uh, decryption operations. We are. Uh, our attack just targeting on the encryption operation. So right, uh, but but I mean, so so when you do the FHE, are you using the symmetric key version of the scheme, or using the asymmetric version of the scheme? Here you are you are attacking the asymmetric version of the of the scheme. So the encryption is is done using the public key, but you could also be attacking the symmetric key version of the scheme. Right, because it works the same way. You're you're just using the secret the secret key, and you're adding this Gaussian noise as well. So I guess you could also attack the entry point that is using uh, the secret key to encrypt, and then you would probably recover the secret key at that, at that point, right? Uh, yes, yes, correct. The, uh, the attack should be the same. Yeah, attack uh, the same, but the difference. Uh... As I remember, uh, the secret key is uh, performing the operation on uh, entity domain. So mm -hmm. we also perform also attack on the entity to find the exact secret key. But All right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think uh, I promised somebody that I will address a question in a minute, but it's a very general question. And not particularly linked to your presentation for Canada. It's um, how long has homomorphic encryption been in existence realistically? Okay, <clears throat> so there. Um, so the if you're so iPhone, we don't know who you are, but since you're asking the question, so if you're talking about homomorphic encryption or fully homomorphic encryption, the answer is not the same. If we're talking about homomorphic encryption, which includes partial homomorphic encryption, it has been around for decades now, and you can use it and it's very efficient, but it's also limited. So if your question is more about fully homomorphic encryption, uh, the answer is a little bit more complex. Uh, and the answer is like twofold. If you don't care about performance, uh, basically it's realistic. I mean, if you're, if you're limited, if you want to execute homomorphically circuits that are kind of simple, uh, you can use fully homomorphic encryption and it will be efficient. Uh, now, the big question is, can you actually support homomorphic computations that are more complex? And then depending on the nature of the scheme that you're using, 
uh, depending on the um, if the scheme is level, depending on the number of levels of the circuit, depending on the fact that you're using bootstrapping to reset the noise in in uh, intermediate ciphertext, you end up with like very very different figures. Um, so it really depends on the scheme that you're using and the computation that you want to do morphically. Um, <clears throat> and, and the question is, so, so there's another like auxiliary question, this question, which is when can we consider that like every even complex computations can be done morphically efficiently? And we have an answer for this at Zama, which is on the horizon of 2025, 2026, maybe, at the moment when there will be hardware support to accelerate and to speed up all the uh, all the uh, underlying homomorphic operations, then it will be a no-brainer. I mean, everything that you do homomorphically will be like 1x to 10x slower than what you would do in the clear. And at that point, that would be, be a no-brainer to just migrate and use a morphic encryption. Uh, but we don't see that happening like very, very soon, unless the, um, I mean, before 2025, unless the computation is particularly simple or has a multiplicative depth that is uh, fairly small. I hope I've answered your question, iPhone. Amazing yeah. answer, thank yeah. you. Thank okay. You. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, I am not, uh, All right. uh, I don't have too much uh, background about homework encryption because my uh, mm -hmm. background is mostly related to side channel attacks. Yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, thank but you. as I always say, you know, it takes a village. You know, when we <laughs> when we want this uh, technology to be adapted, there are plenty of problems. And such an attacking the client side of FHE is also a very realistic and practical problem uh, that we have to tackle. Um, okay, are there any other questions? I'm looking at the chat, but I'm not seeing anything. Um, if somebody else has a question, do not hesitate to raise your hand and we can address it like right now. Oh, quick last question, okay. Go ahead, iPhone. So we don't know who that person is, but uh, her his name is iPhone. So uh, where will the recording be available? Okay, <laughs> that's easy. Um, so we're we're trying to keep records of the presentation so that people who are not able to join today will be able to uh, look at the recording later. And you can just uh, uh, take a look at org and you will find a link to the to this recording as well as the uh, all the previous ones. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, if there are no other questions, I think we can uh, we can wrap up this meeting. Thank you very much, for Ken, for your uh, presentation. And um, and um, uh, so next month, actually, we will not have a meetup because it's the uh, the conference uh, that is taking place. So um, the next meetup will be in. Two months, and um, if you want to continue discuss uh, discussing, uh, you know, continue the discussion, uh, you can um, jump on our Discord channel, where uh, people are very welcome to react to the presentation and, and of course, to uh, interact directly. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I don't know if Jeremy, you want to add something, otherwise we can we can uh, no, wrap up now. Nothing. Thank okay. you, Ken. Thank you, for Ken. Thank you, everybody, and hopefully see you at the conference.